Uh-huh. Don't touch that dial. Listen to Blondie, brought to you by the makers of Camel Cigarettes. Extra, extra! For extra flavor, get Camel. Extra! For extra mildness and extra coolness, get Camel. Extra! For extra smoking per pack, get Camel. The cigarette that gives you the extras. <laughs> Now, before we drop over to the Bumstead house to visit Chick Young's famous characters, Blondie and Dagwood, a word from the makers of Camel Cigarettes. Ladies and gentlemen, it seems that everywhere we turn today, we're confronted with speed and more speed. In our daily lives, it's hurry or I'll be late for my train. I can't stop now. I haven't time. Yes, universally, life has been speeded up. But there's a different story in cigarettes. Every day, more and more smokers, experienced smokers, are discovering that the extras in smoking pleasure are on the slow side, the slow-burning camel side. Science puts it this way. Cigarettes that burn fast burn hot, and nothing so surely mars the delicate elements of cigarette flavor and fragrance as excess heat. Slow-burning preserves these precious natural qualities, gives you more mildness, more flavor, more coolness, of course. Science also tells you which cigarette is slower burning. In recent impartial laboratory tests, camels burn 25% slower than the average of the 15 other of the largest selling brand tested, slower than any of them. Yes, science points the way, and the experience of millions of smokers confirms it. Slower burning camels give you extra mildness, extra coolness, extra flavor, and extra smoking, equal on the average to five extra smokes per pack. Penny for penny, camels are your best cigarette buy. And now for our weekly visit with the Bumstead. It's morning, and Blondie stands at the foot of the stairs, sounding her usual reveille to the man of the house. Dad, Breakfast. Good morning, Mommy. Hello, baby Benson. Go tell Daddy his breakfast is ready. I can't tell you, Mommy. He's up and gone out. Gone out? Uh-huh. As soon as you went downstairs, he got up and got dressed and got out. Well, well, how funny. I didn't hear him. He went tippy toe, Mommy. Tiptoed out of the house without his breakfast. Hmm. Didn't he say anything to you before he went out? Uh-huh. He said, good morning, would I like to be a gypsy? Uh, gypsy? Uh-huh. Listen, Mommy. That sounds to me like our old car coming home. Why, well, yes, it's coming up our driveway. Now we'll see what he's been up to. Come on, baby, the back door. Hey, Blondie. Blondie. Good morning, Dad. Oh, oh, okay. Good morning. Uh, oh, I thought you were somewhere else. No, Dad. Uh, listen, Blondie. It's here. I've got it. Oh. Now, what, Dad? Uh, you put a bed under the sink and a hot and cold running stove that, that sleeps more. What on earth? Of I course, mean... the voice up was extra, but it can go outside when we're inside or vice versa. And the same with pots and pans. Now, listen, Dad. Uh? Count to ten slowly. Yeah. And then tell me what you bought. And how much it costs? Okay, one, two, five, six, nine. It's six and nine dollars, and it's two in the ice box. So it ain't what, Daddy? Huh? Dagwood, hmm? what did you buy? Well, well, I keep telling you, honey, it's a trailer. A trailer? Yes. It's one of those things you drag behind the car? Why, they cost hundreds of dollars. Oh, no, no honey. I mean, sure. Uh, but not this one. You see, the fellow that stole it from me had to leave town in a hurry. Who was that to him, Daddy? No, no, baby jumper. You don't understand. He didn't sell me the trailer because he had to leave town. No, he had to leave town because he sold your father the trailer. Yeah. No, no. Now, listen, this was a bargain. Well, let's look at it, Daddy. <laughs> sure, come on. On to the unveiling. Oh, boy. Hi, diddle dee A gypsy right for me. <laughs> That's it. How's uh, that, huh? Oh, goodness, it's... Huh? Well, it's a funny color, isn't it? Well, we can make it any color. Hey, how'd it look to you, baby dumpling, huh? It looks like somebody was moving their hen house. Now, listen, it's bigger than it looks. Boy, what do you see inside? Oh, a regular little home. Our little rolling home on four wheels. <laughs> One of the tires blew out. Yeah, our little rolling home on three wheels. <laughs> Oh, 
That's good, too, Bonnie. Goodness, uh, that's all the hammering. Yeah, sad words, huh? Are you going to hang all those pots and pans on the outside? Uh, sure, honey. We'll need stuff to cook in. Uh, out on the open road. You mean we'll stop overnight in this trailer? And certainly. We're going places and seeing things. Yes, and everywhere we go, people will think they're seeing things. Huh? Oh, well, anyway, it's very tidy inside, isn't it? I hope so. I like to have a place for everything and everything in its place. Well, in this trailer, some places are for two things. One place for two things? Uh Uh-huh. How do you mean, Douglas? Well, see, uh, two of the beds flip over, (laughs) and there's your table for one thing. Oh, right. The street, baby. The table turns into two beds. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I bet they'll be crumbs in my bed. No, no, baby. Those beds are for Daddy and Mommy. Oh. Where does that baby sleep, Dad? Well, well see, uh, the sink kind of flips over, and uh-huh. there's another bed. Cute, huh, baby Duckworth? Suppose I want a drink of water in my night. Uh-huh. Do I have to get under the bed? No, no, baby Dublin. Look, we won't have to use the sink bed except for company, see? Because the stove flips over too, and there's another bed. Oh, oh I'll show you. Look. Uh, oh, 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 the, the door is a little stuck. Well, let me try with the door, Dublin, yeah. while you pull. Okay, you ready? Right. One, two. That's what I know. Well, I'll fix it later. Anyway, it's open. Walk right in, Blondie. Uh-huh. And have a look around. Uh, oh, it, it's kind of sad, Dagwood. Uh-huh. Are you sure it's safe? Well, why, sure. Let me in there first. I'll show you. Now, see, I just crawl in, mm-hmm. and turn around, and stand up. Oh, 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 oh Dagwood, did you hurt your head? No, <laughs> not very much. And my paint came off the roof. D- never mind the paint. The point is, this is a good, strong trailer, Blondie. Look at it. I'll jump up and down to show you. <laughs> Thanks for anything. Your solid little home on four wheels. On three wheels, Dad. Oh, 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 yeah. On two wheels. There. Now she's back on four wheels. Well, that's nice, dear. But the stairs look kind of worn and ragged to me. Well, they're down underneath where they don't show very much. Oh, well, that's all right. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, see, I'm going to paint the name on the trailer. Uh, oh, I think of the right name. Oh, is it going to have a name? Sure, just like a Pullman car. Uh, how's about calling it the Blondie Bumpstead? Well, uh, no thanks, Douglas. Huh? Oh, Katie, I think that's our front door bell. You go see. Okay, Mommy. Don't name it after me, Daddy. Yeah. Well, gosh, it's a, kind of an honor to have anything named after you, isn't it? Well, that depends, dear. I did think I might call it the spirit of J.C. Diddy's Construction Company. Uh, I wouldn't, I would. Yeah, why not? Oh, oh, look. Huh? There was a name on here. It Where? came it over. It says, mm-hmm. um, Miller Midget. Oh, yeah, Miller's the one who sold it to me. See, two of his midgets got a divorce and he needed something larger. Oh, Daddy, huh? Mr. Dibbers is in the house. Mr. Dibbers? Dibbers, did you know he was coming? Oh, sure. <laughs> I wired the boss to come back from Dobson's Lake. He's all dressed up funny. Hmm? Funny? Uh-huh. He's got on striped pants and his coat is long and fast and it says in the front. Oh, that's his cutaway, baby. I keep doing it upright. He's got a shiny black hat on, too. Yeah. A silk hat? Uh-huh. Dagwood, what in the world for? For the christening, honey. The christening? Sure. One thing Mr. Dibbers loves is a christening. Oh, he'll go miles to be a godfather. Dagwood, huh? you don't mean he's going to christen the trailer? Sure. I mean, if I can think of a name in time. What'll I tell Mr. Dibbers, Daddy? Oh, the time the christening will be uh, out here by the garage. Okay. Well, I, I don't know what he'll think when he sees what he's going to christen. Oh, I bet this trailer will bring out the gypsy in him right away. <laughs> huh? I never saw a gypsy in a silk hat. <laughs> <laughs> gypsy? Hey, how would it be to name the trailer uh, the, the Gypsy Queen? The Gypsy's Revenge would be better. Come mm-hmm. on, let's see just to get us at the back door. Okay, honey. I wonder how he looks in a silk hat. Oh, oh. <laughs> he doesn't change a bit. Okay, where are you? Uh, right here, Mr. Dibbers. Come on out. I got your wire and dropped everything. Well, where's the baby? Well, there isn't exactly any baby, Mr. Dibbers. Huh? No baby? You mean the christening is all? Oh, no, no, Mr. Dibbers. We're christening the Gypsy Queen. Eh? 
Who in the name of the seven to suspicious sisters is a gypsy queen? Stand aside, Dagwood, and let Mr. Vidder see her. Sure. <laughs> Look. Oh. Oh, what's that? It's our new trailer. Her name is going to be uh, Gypsy Queen. Mm -hmm. It ought to be Frowsy Lil. Yeah? Now, see here, Bob said. I leave an important job. Come 200 miles, get all dressed up for this. I smell moss. Oh, oh baby. <laughs> Quiet, baby. Excuse me till I uh, whisper to Baby Dumpling. Um, Baby, huh? Okay, Daddy. <laughs> oh, oh, thanks for wearing your silk hat, Mr. Dinner. Uh, I thought we were christening a baby. Oh, this is better than a baby christening. Uh, listen, you uh, can't break a bottle on a baby, can you? <laughs> uh, oh, are you breaking a bottle? Sure, you bet. Just like on a battleship. Oh, do I break the bottle? Of course you can. Uh, can you, Daddy? <laughs> sure. I wanted a, an very important man to uh, launch the Gypsy Queen on her travel. Well, I always did like breaking bottles, mm -hmm. but I don't approve of wasting champagne. Yeah, so do I. I, I mean, <laughs> that's what I thought. So, um, uh, I got the ginger ale. Oh, oh, damn good. Oh. I found that bottle of ginger ale last night. Not ginger ale, Daddy, oh. but I brought a bottle of ketchup. Ketchup? I didn't come all the way from Dumpster's Lake to break ketchup bottles. Oh, it's better than champagne, Mr. Gibbons. It, uh, well, it makes more score. Sure. Now, don't back out on us now, Mr. Gibbons. Uh, listen, you go ahead and christen her with the ketchup, and I'll tell you what we'll do. Oh, we'll drive you all the way back to Dobson's Lake in style. Yes, you can ride in the trailer. Yes. Well, is it easy riding? Sure, just like a private car. And can we start right after the christening? Oh, yes, our bags are all inside. Well, I'll have to wear what I got on. All right, I'll Christmas. Stand back, everybody. Yes, yeah, stand back, Blondie. Stand back, baby. Swing <laughs> hard, Mr. Dinners. Don't worry. Now, hats off. Yes, yeah, I am. I christened thee the gypsy queen. Oh! Oh, no battle, Daddy Gray. Look at my hand, Blondie. Oh, that's only a little ketchup. The court came out. How about our Daddy Gray? Well, something's broke. Oh, then look at that all in the trailer. It smashed right through the side. Well, you ought to have stronger sides. Or weaker bottles. Oh, I can put my head through that hole. You can put your head through the eye of a needle. Oh, never mind, Dagwood. It needed more ventilation anyway. Oh. Now, Mr. Gibbers, you get in the trailer and make yourself cozy. Dagwood and I will drive the car. And, baby, you can keep Mr. Gibbers company in the house. Yeah, come on. Daddy, Dagwood. Oh. Yeah, sure. And then we're off. Oh. We're off for the open road. <laughs> This is the open road, all right. I never saw anything open up. Do you know where we are, Dagwood? Well, I've been going by that map, but there's something wrong. We should have passed three towns in the last 40 miles. Let's see the map. Mm, okay. mm. Why does the map say Idaho on it, Dagwood? Huh? Why, because the map... Hey, we're not in Idaho. Yeah, are we? Of course not, dear. You've been going by the wrong map. We're lost. Well, we can't be so very lost. You want to go to Dobson's Lake, and we're not in Idaho. Well, well, Dobson's Lake isn't in Idaho either. Hey, what's that? Thunder. Huh? It's going to rain. Maybe that's why it got dark so early. Oh, well, I hope that trailer doesn't leak on Mr. Dithers. Listen, it's slow up, Dad, but yeah. there's a sign by the road. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, golly, why doesn't the Gypsy Queen slow down when I do? Look, Dadwin, huh? the sign says... Can't call in. Trailer's welcome. Yeah, it looks like a hobo jungle to me. Oh, um, here it's raining. You know, maybe we ought to stop here, Dad, No, honey. If I don't get Mr. Dithers to Dobson's Lake tonight, the least I can do is stop at a nice place. I know, but that's a steep hill, just to hear. Oh, we'll make it okay. Oh, maybe when we get up high, maybe we'll see a better place to stop, huh? <laughs> here yeah. goes. I hope Baby Dumpling can keep Mr. Dibber's mind off this ride. Yeah, well, look, uh, tune in and, and hear what they're saying back there, Blondie. Hmm? Tune in? Sure. Didn't you see my invention? No. Well, look, uh, pick up that rubber tube that comes in the back window there. Oh, a speaking tube? Speaking or listening. It, it runs between us and the Gypsy Queen. <laughs> Pretty good, huh? <laughs> if it works. Sure it works. Oh, oh, Dad, what it does. I can hear Baby Dumpling talking. Oh, you like that, eh? Well, that gives me been thinking about the thunderstorm. Now, 
a big boy like you isn't afraid of thunder. Now, oh, quiet. I'll tell you another story to soothe your nerves. Now, listen. Once upon a time, a little gnarled up dwarf lived in a dark cave that was full of man eating bats. Now, why? This dwarf didn't have any taste. I want an umbrella. This roof is leaking. Here, talk to her through this tube. Tell your father to slow down, too. <coughs> That's higher. Let me have that tube. Hey, Bumpstead! Bumpstead! You're riding on a flat! On the rim, Bumpstead! <coughs> it's like all your father's inventions. They never work when you need them. There goes another tire. Bumpstead! Bumpstead! <coughs> I thought I heard baby crying. Okay. Uh, now that we're on top of the hill, uh, I didn't. I didn't hear anything. It's too dark to see anything either. Well, uh, I'll holler through the tube there. Well, the tube's gone. Huh? Something jerked it out of my hand. The tube's gone. Mm -hmm. Gone where? Oh, uh, where do I wipe off the back window? Yeah. yeah no, I can see. Hey, the trailer. Well, the trailer's gone too. Well, we well, must have lost it on the hill. Oh. Well, we'll return to the bumpsteads in a moment. But first, there's one thing that's known to cigarette smokers everywhere, and that's the phrase, I'd walk a mile for a camel. Yes, more smokers prefer camel cigarettes than any other brand. Camels are made from finer, more expensive tobaccos. They're slower burning, and they give you extra coolness and extra mildness. Being slower burning, camels are free from the irritating qualities of excess heat and too fast burning. Camels are mild, easy on the throat. Camels are cooler, too, for naturally the slower a cigarette burns, the cooler the smoking. And because slow burning preserves the natural flavor and fragrance of fine tobaccos, camels give you extra flavor. Economy, too. Slower burning camels last longer and give you extra smoking for cigarettes or fat. In recent impartial laboratory tests, camels burn 25% slower than the average of the 15 other of the largest selling brands tested. Slower than any of them. And that means a smoking plus, equal on the average to five extra smokes per pack. Now, if you live in a community where certain state cigarette taxes are in effect, you can save the cost of the tax through smoking camels. If there are no added taxes where you live, the savings are all yours. Yes, there's more pleasure for puffs and more puffs per pack in camels. That's why smokers say, I'd walk a mile for a camel. And now we return to Dagwood and Blondie, who've traced their runaway trailer to the bottom of the hill and right into Camp's crawl in. Oh, Thank heavens they didn't tip over, Dagwood. Yeah. These tire marks looked like they were riding on two rims and two tires, and uh, that kind of slowed them up. All right, Sherlock. Just huh? find that trailer. I want to see if my baby's all right. Oh, gosh, so do I. But I'm not so anxious to find Mr. Giddish. Golly, I wonder what he thought when they went coasting into this hobo camp. Oh, hurry, Dagwood. Pretty dark to go very fast. Oh, right, let's call up for them. Hello! Hey, hey, listen, a tire blew out. That sounds like the Gypsy Queen, all right. Where did the sound come from? <coughs> oh, there goes the last tire. It's over there. Yeah, yeah, come on. Here he is, Blondie. Oh, oh, oh. oh hey. baby, are you all right in there? Yes, but we can't get that door open. Oh, God, I'll open it. Oh, oh. oh. Again, Never mind. It'll let some of the water out. Out? Yes, out. It's up to my ankles in here. Hello, please. Oh, baby Dumplin, I'm so glad to see you. Mommy will light a fire and get you warm. Yeah, now who's going to get me warm? I, I, uh, oh, 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 I knew it. Now listen, I, I can fill that voice up I brought with water. Is that a bad for the apple, Daddy? No, no, baby Dumplin, but we'll heat the water and soak your feet. If I can find enough water to fill a tub. You want water, eh? Just ring me out. 
I'm afraid you're catching cold, Mr. Dibby. Wait, I'll light the oil stove. Come, baby. Mommy will drive. And here's your job. Oh, and you know what? Our tires can blow that jazz. And it is still too good. <laughs> Nothing like two good tires on a four-wheel trailer. <laughs> you see, the noise we heard must have been a backfire. That means there's another car in this camp. Well, what are you standing there for? Go find them. Huh? Yeah, you get some help. We'll get a jack. Get some boards. Get the tires, James. Get out! Uh, ask for them. Oh, yes, sir. And get me out of here by tomorrow noon. I'm going to speak at the up, up, up to this club. Ah, I, I think your sneeze is a little better, Mr. Dibbins. Well, I'm getting lots of practice. Where's the fire you're going to light? Where's the hot coffee we're going to have? Well, I'm afraid there's something wrong with the stove and the sink. When I put water in the coffee pot, it was hurricane. And when I turned on the stove, it played water like a fountain. Elementary, my dear Mrs. Bumpstead. Dad was got the feed lights crossed up. Oh. Light a match and I'll look. Well, I'm afraid all the matches are wet, too. Well, maybe I've got a dry match. Oh, yes. Just one. Now stand back while I light it. Oh, oh it's right. Now be careful, Mr. Gibbons. Don't talk. It makes a draft that I... Uh, oh! Oh, the match out, my Oh, Mrs. Yes, yes, I'm through. I'm going. Where's my hat? Where's Mr. Gibbons' so cat, baby? Here it is. It's got some water in it. Huh? You said put something under the leak in the road. Oh, baby. I'll go without a hat. Where's your car? Out by the road. But, but wait, if you drive home, what will we do? Who said I was driving home? I'm going to find the garage. Get new tires. Oh. Get you all <laughs> out of here. Hey, Mommy, I can't even make the window shade. I was leaving to get you all. Uh, how many tires do you need? Two? Just two. Two <laughs> tires. <laughs> three tires now. All right, I'll get three <laughs> tires. Oh, I'm a baby. I know, I know. I'll get four new tires. <laughs> Somebody's standing outside our tent. So maybe wake the baby. No one means us harm, Jenny. I'll see who's outside. Here's a lantern, Mole. Who's there? It's <laughs> just me. I uh, saw your light. And... Bless my soul. It's a young fella. Wet to the skin. Jenny, make room by the oil stove. Huh? Uh, well, I, I don't want to crowd you. It might be a free wet. And why wouldn't they be a night like this? Come in. Have you all? Huh? Uh, well, uh, no. Hungry, too. Jenny, dish up the mush. We we got company for stuff. Oh, oh, no, thanks. There's I... only one help left, more. As long as there's any, we'll turn no hungry man away. Sit down, mister. Oh, I'm afraid I'm robbing you. Oh, no, no. We've all had bar and Eddie, and he's out looking for work, bless him. Would have found something to eat somewhere, more. Yes, he'll be back by now. Is uh, Eddie your husband, Mrs. Uh, Prim? Oh. No, sir. Eddie's my boy and the man of the family. Mm-hmm. Now, now Mr. Prim has passed on. Eddie's 15. Mm-hmm. Guys. A- and he supports you? Mm-hmm. He does what he can. Mm-hmm. And so do we all. You're, you're not eating your lunch, Mr. Huh? Oh, it, it's very good. Are you sure you've eaten, Mrs. Prim? Oh, I'm on kind of a now diet, you might say. Yes. I don't need so much, me not working. Do the three of you travel in that uh, automobile out there? Four of us, but the baby takes no room at all. Someday we'll stop traveling. It'll be good to stop traveling. For many years traveling. Sorry. Oh, we'll get along. Now, come on, eat your much. Huh? It's better than it looks. Oh, it, it, it's fine. That, that's not what's wrong. But, oh, you can't fool me. This was your supper, all you had, and you gave it to me when you didn't even know my name. Listen, I only think I'm hungry. Uh, right over there, somewhere, I have a trailer just full of stuff to eat, and a little wife that's the best cook in the state. Bless my soul. Yeah, and I was sorry for myself till I met you. Now, you know what we're going to do? We're all going over to my place for the best supper you've ever had. A 
little more cake, Mrs. Green? No, thank you kindly. Maybe Eddie, though, he works so hard and all. Eddie's gone to sleep, sitting up. Oh, you'll have to excuse me. It's so warm and cozy in here. Yeah, it's dried out pretty good. I'm glad I got that stove working. It's a lovely stove. Isn't it, Benny? Oh, I don't know what you'll think of us all. But you're done used to eating so hardy. <laughs> I think you're the nicest family I've met in a long while. You bet. Turkey me in, a stranger and all. Oh, I don't expect there are any strangers, mister. There's one father to us all. You, uh, you must tell me how you made that much you had, Mrs. Green. Dad would say it smells delicious. Oh, oh and now, I, I don't expect it would do for, well, rich people. Rich? You mean I? Well, now, I'm glad for you, but you must be well off to live in a lovely little house on wheels like this. But you, you, you like this trailer? Oh, it's a real pleasure to sit in it. I wish my baby was old enough to know the nice bed he was sleeping in. Sheets, too. Clean sheets, like, like we used to have at home. Uh, <clears throat> look, Mrs. Friend, we don't exactly live in this trailer. We just... Oh, God, wait, wait, huh? Golly, did Mr. Did it. He brought back the car. With tires for the trailer, I hope. Are you moving on tonight? Well, I'll just rouse up my young one. Oh, no, no. Uh, let them sleep. A little longer. Okay. Yes, I'm coming. I'll go with you, Jasmine. I, I want to talk to you. Well, we'll all help you put on the tire. Oh, no. In the morning will be time enough for that. Well, I'll just get up the place for you whilst you're gone. Ah, my, this is handy, though. I think right by the stove. Hot water. Put the last tire down with the others. Don't let her hear it. She's humming a tune in there while she works. Oh, Dagwood. I'm so glad you agreed with me. Oh, she needs it worse than we do. We'll enjoy it more this way than if we kept it ourselves. Yeah. Honey, have you got the notes to read for her? Mm hmm. Right here. Well, read it to me again. Well, I'll, I'll have to get in the light from the doorway. Thank you, please. No. She's still humming. Sorry. The note says, Dear Mrs. Green, we are not coming back. We want you to have the home on wheels you like so much. Rest well in its clean bed. Warm yourself at its fire, as we were warmed by a glimpse of your own cheerful heart. Goodbye, and good luck always. Randy, and Dan. In just a moment, we'll give you a brief synopsis of next week's Blondie story. But first... Extra, extra! Camels give you extra flavor. Extra! Camels give you extra mildness and extra coolness. Extra! Camels give you extra smoking for fact. Try Camels, the cigarette that gives you the extra. Camels bring you two other great shows each week. On Saturday, there's luncheon at the Waldorf with Ilka Chase. You'll find it a new high in daytime entertainment. On Saturday night, tune in and hear Bob Crosby and Mildred Bailey featuring music with a heartbeat. And next Monday night at the same time, tune in on Blondie. We think you'll get a chuckle out of Jagwood's experience on the witness stand. Well, that's a tip for your radio enjoyment. And for your smoking enjoyment every day, try Camels, the cigarette that gives you the extra. Beginning next Monday, due to daylight saving time, Blondie will be heard one hour earlier on many of these stations. Consult your newspaper for exact time. Blondie is written and directed by Ash Mead Scott. And this is Bill Goodwin speaking for the makers of Camel Cigarettes. Good night, all. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Mm-hmm.